Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow Industrials right now trading down, down to 215. You get the Nasdaq off 132. S&Ps are off 39. Let's get over to our man, Mr. Tim Ord, as we do each and every Thursday at 20 past the hour. And you can reach Tim, folks, uh, at all times at Ord, O-R-D, dash Oracle dot com. Tim Ord, what's going on? Uh, thanks for having me on. Thanks for having me on. Did you... Uh, did you get my uh, chart? I sure did. did. We have them, have up, them here, up here, ready to ready rock, to and, rock roll. and roll. All right, all right. Well, the first chart, uh, I think that Pring, remember him? He's actually older than us. Martin Pring, <laughs> yeah. Uh, is it Robert Pring? Well, anyhow, he came out with a inflation thing and a deep. Well, anyhow, I made a ratio out of it. Okay. And so uh, that window down, you know, the top window is the RSI for that. Uh, inflation deflation ratio, and below that is the uh, inflation deflation ratio itself. Okay. And this chart goes back to, um, I don't know, 2000, can't quite see it. You know, it goes back to uh, 2013 or something. Anyhow, so anyhow, when the ratio is rising, then inflation is outperforming deflation and vice versa. And so I stuck an RSI to this thing. And it works pretty well, uh, so it gives a bunch of signals, not not very many signals, but it gives about a signal a year, give or take. And uh, the uh, blue lines are when the RSI of this inflation-deflation ratio falls below 30. Uh, so the market's kind of getting hit, uh, or inflation, or deflation's hitting hard against uh, inflation. So we got a signal back in August of last year because the RSI of this ratio fell below um, 30, and it turned up. And so this, this is kind of another signal. So this single, um, so this method gave a signal back in August and remains on the signal. Uh, the sell signals don't work quite as good. They give, um, when the RSI gets above 70, it's time uh, that the market's gone up too quick. A lot of times it comes uh, sometimes early uh, last year, it nailed the, the top pretty good, but the one before that, it was kind of nailed a, a consolidation phase back at that 2020 time frame, and the market went down a little bit and came right back up. But you know, this is I do a lot of different type indicators, and I try to stick to indicators that nobody else uses. If yes. everybody starts using an indicator, uh, then it kind of quits working. Uh, so I don't see anybody from this stuff I read around the Internet. Nobody really uses this. That's so why we love you so well. much, Tim. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. I said that's why we love you so much. You have indicators that no one uses. Yeah. So so anyhow, I put it this way. We, we had last week, we had a, uh, uh, I think, an 18-day average up-down volume advanced client indicators that uh, when they – fell below 40, which they did again last August, kind of matched this signal here. And when they get above plus 40, which they did on April 4th, I think that's the one we covered last week. And what that implies is a surge pattern. And that surge pattern usually has a rally, pa uh, a rally pattern that lasts four or five months. Well, I gave a bicycle in, in March of this year, so you had four or five months to, to come up to August uh, where the surge pattern may end. My point of that is, if if this indicator of the um, inflation deflation ratio RSI reaches up around 70, say in August or September, yes, that would uh, that would bode well with the other indicator suggesting may see a top in August or September. So I'm thinking we may have a rally all the way into August September. Then from there, we may take a rest. Okay. So right now, these surge patterns are pretty rare. Uh, so you kind of want to get on them. But they, uh, you know, everybody's probably calling it a high here. We had a heck of a good rally. But on these surge patterns, you'll have minor consolidations that may last maybe one or two weeks, but not a month. Uh, so I still think this GDX thing is still in a buy. And in general, we're going to work hard, probably higher all the way into August, maybe September. So we'll have to wait and see. Nice. Okay. Okay. And then the um, next shot, let's see. The next shot, I got the uh, monthly XAU chart. Yeah, it's a monthly XAU uh, gold ratio, which which is in the middle window there. And this, I took it back as far as I could go, and it goes back to about 1984. 
And what I want to point out in this chart, uh, from 2014 to, to now, the ratio, XAU gold ratio on the monthly time frame, really hasn't gone anywhere. It's just gone sideways. And in my opinion, this is building cause for the next move higher. Gold stocks, they really haven't done anything since the 2000 low. They really had a, a screaming market from about 2000 to 2000 level. And you could have bought anything and made a lot of money. Right, right. And it, and it went down. And gold right now is, you know, relatively speaking, it's done a lot better than the gold issues. At some point, I would expect this, this um, XAU to gold ratio to break out of this sideways pattern, you know, the Bollinger Bands are kind of squeezing. I drew a, a trend lines on this chart going back from the previous highs and previous lows and also connected to the previous highs going back to 2014. So we're in a kind of a tight range, and it looks like we're trying to break above the downturn line connecting the highs going back to, what, 1995 or we're kind of on that line right now. Yes. yes. And uh, I'm, I'm thinking what we're going to do is probably go go back all the way back up to 0.175, which is that trend line we broke down through on um, my eyesight's not. Yeah, no, I, see, I see. I see. Yep. I see. Yep. But but we had a sharp break down below um, uh, 0.175, and we're kind of building a base way below that right now, I'm thinking we could have a sharp rally back up to 175 and from a point 175 and from there, I'm not sure. But, uh, you know, things can only remain unfavorable for so long. Gold stocks are not going to go away. There, it's an industrial metal along with silver, so it's not some product that you don't need in everyday life. At some point, it's going to come back in favor. It's probably going to come back in favor in a big way. Yes. Not sure when, but we get above the upper trend line, which is on 0.09. Um, I think you're going to see a, a big burst in these gold stocks. That's my personal opinion. Nice. But, and then the um, next the, chart, the next, the next chart, chart, we're talking, talking about the S&P, &P, Tim. S&Ps. Uh, the bottom window is the VIX. Yes. yes. And I, I drew the... Uh, a shaded pink area at the bottom. Yep. Uh, when the VIX got below uh, 17, we're right around still 17 today. And a lot of times when that happened, the mark was, which is the blue area posted on the chart on the S&Ps. So every time it got this low, it actually kind of a, implies that we're kind of in a trending market. And I think that's what we may be having here. I don't. Uh, if if the VIX remained high, say around 20 plus. You know, you got a big downtrend going or a kind of a bearish scenario. But if you get below 17, I'm, I'm thinking you're heading into a trending market. Also, if pre election year, which is this year, April is up 94% of the time. And if January is up in a pre election year, which it was over 6%, April is up 88% of the time. So even though we're down today here a little bit, I think April uh, could break above uh, the recent highs of 410 on the SPY. Okay. Well, listen, man, we appreciate the update. We look forward to speaking to you next Thursday, Tim. All right. Thank you. Thank you. And, folks, you can reach Tim at Ford-Oracle.com. Stay right there, folks. We'll come right back.